What is up guys, it's Modern Warfare here and welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to be giving you guys a de detailed look at the console manager and file manager in Apparition Net Studio, which is a new product that we've released for $25. It's essentially an all-in-one modding program for your JTAG or RGH console. So yeah, we're going to have a detailed look at that in this video. I, I have made an overview video which just gives you a brief look at all the different things in the tools so you get a general idea of how much content is in Apparition Net Studio. But in this video, we're going to go into more detail on the console manager and file manager. And I'll also have future videos coming out soon, which will go into more detail on the other tools in the software. So, so basically the console manager is our replacement for neighborhood. So you can do the same kind of stuff you can do in neighborhood, like add your Xbox 360. So you just add the IP address of the Xbox 360. Obviously you need to have XPDM and all that stuff in there. And then you can add Xbox 360. And then you've got similar right click options to neighborhood. You can open in file manager. You can reboot the console. You can take a screenshot and the screenshot tool allows you to take screenshots just like you would do, um, in Xbox 360 neighborhood. Exactly the same, but it also has extra features like the ability to upload to imager. If you do that, it will upload the screenshot to imager when you're taking it. And you can also output that into your web browser as well. So you get a preview of the image and that is copied to your clipboard as well. So all you have to do, if I open up a quick notepad document here, all you have to do is just paste that in a chat. If you wanted to send the screenshot to someone, it's really easy. You can also go ahead and capture region. If you select that as well, then it will open up our image viewer from which you can then select a specific portion of the screenshot to upload to imager. If I just wanted say, um, say just this, I can select that and it will upload just that section to Imager for me. So you can do that as well. So that's the screenshot tool. Then you can obviously make the console default console. You can remove the console. Um, you can check the console info. So that's the IP, CPU key, kernel version, current title ID that you're on and your CPU temperature. And then there's also console functions, which allows you to open and close the disk tray. Not sure if you'll be able to hear that. You can also edit the fan speed and change the LEDs on a fat console. And you can also send custom X notify messages to the console as well. And so that is basically the console manager. Now the file manager can be opened by right clicking and clicking open file manager. So you can also double click the icon to open up the file manager, which allows you to browse through all your files. You can launch XCX files just like you can do in neighborhood. So if we open Modern Warfare 3, we can go ahead and launch the default.xcx. So you've got your default.xcx, your mp.xcx, you just double click to launch it. And then of course you can also add them to Quick Launcher, which allows you to launch your games much faster. So rather than having to go back into this directory every time you want to launch the game, you can add the XCX to Quick Launch. So if I select the multiplayer XCX for Modern Warfare 3, I can click Add to Quick Launch, give it a name like MW3. Um, you can also give it an icon if you wish, you don't have to though, and then click Add Launch. So now the next time I want to uh, launch Modern Warfare 3, I don't actually need to open the file manager anymore. I can just click the Quick Launch icon and click Modern Warfare 3 and it will launch the game straight away. So that's very useful. You can also access the file manager from this icon here instead of having to go through the console manager. So we'll go ahead and open this up. So other features that are in the console um, that are in the file manager. So obviously you can also do stuff like open image files. If I can find any image files, there'll probably be some in Aurora. There we go. There's some image files here. So you can double click them and just open them straight from the console without having to transfer them to the computer. So there's that. Then of course you can do this kind of obvious stuff. So you can create directories, you can um, delete directories, copy and paste files from one location to the other. You can import files from the computer to the console. You can export files from the console to the computer. You can delete files. You can also change the order of files. So ascending or descending order, copy the path of a file, etc. So all that kind of basic stuff. There's still more to be done on here, but um, there's quite a lot of stuff that you can do. You can also open up launch.ini files for your dash launch settings, and that will open them up in the dash launch configurator. So you can edit all of your dash launch settings. You can edit your plugin list. You can edit your button launches as well. So there's that. 
Then you've also got other extra hidden little options, so I'll give you an example if I delete these two files here. So I delete my KV. So let's say I was wanting to obviously import a key vault. Say I just bought a new key vault and CPU and I've got the CPU key.txt file for it. And I want to obviously transfer that to the console so that I can get online. So normally if I was going to do this, I would probably check the key vault to make sure it's not banned. Obviously we do have a KV checker in Apparition Net Studio you can use to do that as well. But the thing is, you don't have to with the file manager. So I'll just put these in here. So let's say I want to go ahead and import those files now. So here's the CPU key.txt file and, this, and the KV. So I'll just select them both and import them. And it will detect that I am transferring a key vault. And it will ask if I want to check to see if it's banned. So I can say yes. That'll check to see if the key vault's banned. You can see this key vault is not banned. So there we go. I know it's not banned. I didn't have to open up a separate KV checker to check it. It will just check it when you import it. So that is very useful. So you don't have to, you know, separately check the KV every time you want to import it. And then with the CPU key.txt file as well, normally on most stealth servers, they won't accept a CPU key.txt file. You'll need to convert it to a CPU key.bin file which takes a bit of time, it's a bit of a usage. You have to open up the text file, copy the CPU key, then probably open up HXD and paste the CPU key into the hex values and then save it as a CPU key.bin. Well, with our file manager, you don't need to do that. All you have to do is double click on the CPU key.txt file and you'll get this message. If you click yes, it will convert it to a .bin file. And there we go, it's now a CPU key.bin file. So you can go online with your new key vault and CPU key.bin. So let's compare it to neighborhood guys. You can see we've got neighborhood here on the left and we've got our file manager on the right. So let's see how long it takes us to get into the Modern Warfare 3 directory on neighborhood. Bear in mind this is a wired connection. I'm directly wired uh, from my computer to my Xbox. So neighborhood should be as fast as it can possibly be right now. So we'll go ahead, retail hard drive, so fairly quick, Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 3, and you can see it's taking a little while. And another thing that's annoying about neighborhoods, when you scroll down, it's very laggy, it has to load. And for neighborhood, that was pretty quick, but if you compare that to, say, the file manager, which is going HDD, Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 3, that's the whole thing loaded that quickly, much faster. And I'll also go ahead and do a wireless test as well, because wireless just kills neighborhood. Especially for me, on a wireless connection, neighborhood is pretty much unusable. So I'll go ahead and do a comparison on wireless, which will give you a, a true comparison of how much faster uh, the file manager in Apparition Net Studio is. Okay guys, so we're back here on wire on wireless. You can see my IP is different, 1.84, so I'm on a wireless connection right now. Will neighborhood even open? That's the question. Now, I never recommend using a neighborhood for... Uh, f well, I never recommend using wireless for any kind of real-time editing mods whatsoever. It's never a good idea to use wireless um, straight from, you know, wireless from console to computer and then wireless from computer to console. It's the worst possible connection you can get from RTE. For RTE uh, tools, you get a lot of um, errors trying to send uh, mods to the console because of packet loss and stuff. So it's really not a good idea to use wireless. So let's see how this behaves. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and go into Modern Warfare 3 and see how long it takes to find the default.xcx for Modern Warfare 3. So we'll go into retail hard drive emulation. Taking its time. Just a white screen. It's trying. There we go. Okay, so now Modern Warfare 3. Modern Warfare 3. And white screen again. Taking its time. Not responding. There's our classic not responding. As Neighborhood always does. Oh, okay, and it's finally loaded. So we can now launch the default.xcx, but if I wanted to say scroll down to the bottom to find the um, the last file, then try and scroll down, and again, it's frozen, and it's got a 
wait and catch up and find all those files and now it's finally loaded down to the bottom. So let's see how long this takes in the file explorer for Apparition Net Studio now. So we'll go HDD and where are we? Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 3. Done. Right down to the bottom, loaded already, just a couple of seconds. So you can see even on wireless how much faster it is. But even so guys, I don't recommend using wireless on Apparition Net Studio or on any RTE tool or for anything related or neighborhood or nothing. Don't don't use wireless. Wireless is awful. But at least you can at least you know um the file manager is a lot faster even on wireless. So so yeah, that's basically the file manager guys. Uh, is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else I need to mention. You've got this right click option so you can copy and paste files, import, export, create directories, delete folders, delete files and rename files and folders as well. And as I showed before, you can order files in ascending order or descending order. So you've got all of that. So that is basically the file manager, guys. I'll kind of more of a detailed look at that and the console manager as well. If you like this video or you found the information useful, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Bear in mind that uh, if you're wanting to buy Apparition Net Studio, there's a purchase link in the description. There'll also be a link to um, Apparition Net Studio, the Apparition Net Studio website will be linked in the video description as well. And there'll also be a playlist link, which will give you a list of all the videos I've made on Apparition Net Studio so far. There's going to be quite a few more coming after this one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Shuffling